Hi guys, Dr. Rob Barrington here with some more nutrition advice. Uh, what I want to talk to uh, about today uh, is about aerobic exercise and losing weight. Uh, now if you've watched my uh, some of my other videos, if you've uh, read my blog, what you find is that I don't recommend that those people that are overweight or obese uh, perform aerobic exercise. And there's three main reasons why I don't think uh, people who are overweight uh, should perform uh, what I call classic aerobic exercise like running, um, long walks, uh, any any type of jogging, uh, treadmills, anything that involves um, long periods of lo uh, exercise in an, for an aerobic capacity for long period uh, for long periods. And the the three main reasons are uh, that firstly, um, it will stimulate your uh, your your uh, your appetite, uh, and that's a that's a problem if you uh, have uh, uh, if you are obese or if you are uh, uh, overweight. Secondly, um, if you perform aerobic exercise, certain types of aerobic exercise, uh, if you are overweight, you are going to put a lot of stress on your joints. Uh, the third reason uh, that I don't recommend uh, performing aerobic exercise if you are overweight is because aerobic exercise is generally catabolic. Um, now I'm going to go through these three points um, in turn in order to be able to explain where I'm coming from. Um, the, first, the first point is very interesting. Generally those people that are overweight uh, or obese have become that way because they've eaten poor quality foods, they've eaten a poor quality diet and this has led them to get insulin resistance. This insulin resistance has then uh, caused a metabolic dysfunction uh, and this metabolic dysfunction um, it, it has m many different symptoms but one of the symptoms is uh, that the, uh, the, the, the effect of the insulin uh, resistance in the hypothalamus causes leptin insensitivity and that leptin insensitivity in turn causes a dysfunction in the appetite regulatory mechanism uh, in the brain and this means that it's very difficult to know how much to eat and, 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 and how when to stop eating and this is one of the symptoms that we see of uh, uh, metabolic syndrome which is a uh, part and parcel for uh, uh, of obesity and weight gain we see this insulin resistance that causes a, a dysfunction in the appetite regulatory mechanism if you then go out and pour, uh, perform uh, some very uh, long duration exercise that will stimulate your appetite now if you already have a dysfunction in your appetite regulatory uh, mechanism and you're stimulating your appetite what you'll find is that you you tend to overeat and I find this quite often those people that perform lots of aerobic exercise uh, they tend to eat a lot more. Now that's perfectly acceptable if you are uh, healthy and of normal weight. The reason your appetite is stimulated after exercise is because you need to uh, restore uh, the energy that you've used uh, and in much of that energy will have come from uh, glycogen in your skeletal muscles and your liver and therefore you have uh, cravings usually for carbohydrate foods you consume those carbohydrate foods and the carbohydrate is then stored in your skeletal muscle uh, and your liver as glycogen and that replenishes your glycogen for the next time you exercise that works very effectively and that system is there uh, to allow you to do that and it works very effectively if you are of normal weight and you don't have a metabolic dysfunction. The problem is that obesity is a disease and it's a disease char characterized by many biochemical changes. And these changes mean that when you eat food following exercise, the glycogen is not effectively stored where it should be. And this re relates back to insulin resistance and the fact that your, uh, your metabolic uh, activity is not uh, functioning as it should. Now that's not to say that exercise uh, shouldn't be performed by those people who are overweight. There are forms of exercise that I do recommend uh, and one of them is resistance training uh, and the reason I recommend uh, resistance training is because it's very good at increasing the sensitivity uh, to insulin in skeletal muscle and it increases the sensitivity in all the muscles of the body which gives an overall better effect than uh, simply performing aerobic exercise. Uh, it will still stimulate the appetite uh, but the benefits of um, a resistance training are that you get a an increase in skeletal muscle mass and that increase in skeletal muscle mass also increases your resting metabolic rate and therefore the increase in appetite that you have will be offset by the fact that you are born, burning more calories uh, throughout the day. Now that's not to say that aerobic exercise doesn't increase the metabolic rate, it does to a small amount but it won't do 
to the same degree as resistance training because the resting metabolic rate is proportional to the amount of muscle, skeletal muscle that you have. And so resistance training, uh, despite the fact that it does also uh, cause an increase in appetite, will actually offset that because of the weight it actually increases your resting metabolic rate. So resistance training is a much better way of uh, performing uh, exercise for those people that are overweight uh, and, and obese. Uh, and also uh, there is less stress on the joints as well. Uh, when you tend to perform um, resistance training, uh, what tends to happen is that when you're warming up, uh, the, sino the pressure of the sino in the synovial joints increases and that has a, has a protecting effect on, on, on the joints. Uh, the problem with uh, aerobic exercise, particularly running and some other forms of aerobic exercise, is that you get this pounding in the joints. Uh, and if you are of normal weight, uh, that is uh, perfectly natural and, uh, and you can, uh, your body will cope with that. Your, your joints are designed to, to take that, those kind of impacts. But if you're carrying a lot of extra weight, uh, and if you're obese, for example, and you go out for a jog, you're putting a very high uh, amount of pressure through your joints and, and, and you can damage your joints if you do that uh, for long durations uh, and over a long period of time. So that's not to say that you should never run, but if you're overweight and you're obese and you're looking to lose weight, uh, firstly, you're not you're going to stimulate your appetite, which actually means that you're going to eat more. And secondly, you're going to damage uh, damage your joints. Now, that doesn't mean that you couldn't perform for ha perhaps swimming. Um, you know, swimming obviously takes all of the pressure off your joints. There are exercises, uh, uh, there is exercise, aerobic exercise that you could do that doesn't damage your joints. Cycling as well uh, would be another one. Uh, but generally what, what you find is that when people decide that they're going to lose weight, the first thing they do is they cut their calories and they go out jogging. Uh, and I'm just going to, I'm just making this video to highlight uh, some of the uh, problems associated with this, with this strategy. Um, if we go back to the, uh, the problems with appetite, another, another, um, problem I find is that if, if you do perform, a, a, a aerobic exercise, let's say you start jogging, uh, you're overweight and you stimulate your appetite, unless you've already cleaned up your diet and you're eating a high quality diet, what you're going to tend to do is overeat the foods that you've been eating that have caused you to become obese. Um, and that's going to cause more metabolic dysfunction. The first step really to losing weight is to clean up your diet, is to eat high quality foods that don't have this insulin desensitizing uh, effect. Um, once you do that, overeating is not so damaging. But if you do decide that jogging is something you want to do, you'll stimulate your appetite, you'll become hungry after you've been out jogging. And if you haven't cleaned up your diet, what you're in danger of doing is actually overeating the foods that have caused uh, the obesity in the first place, which of course is going to then just cause more damage to your biochemistry. So you have to be very careful the way you approach this. And obviously, if you just go out and start jogging, you're going to cause a lot of damage, uh, possibly cause a lot of damage um, to your joints. And this is why you should really consult a professional if you're going to decide to do exercise and you haven't been exercising previously. And also you need to remember that exercise doesn't, in, doesn't always involve putting on a pair of trainers and going out and doing something that you would associate with uh, you know, elite sportsmen. Digging the garden is a good form of exercise. And I've, I've said this many times in many of my videos. You can get a good day's exercise doing household tasks, walking to work, uh, taking the stairs instead of taking the lift. There are many ways that you can incorporate exercise into your daily um, routine without actually performing uh, you know, any sports or, any, or going into a gym. So that's something else to bear in mind. But think about, uh, not, think about the way that the exercise is going to stimulate your appetite. Think about overeating the types of food that you've that have actually caused this problem and also think about your joints because uh, it, once you've damaged your joints and you've caused injuries it's actually very difficult to carry on exercising uh, and once you've lost a certain amount of weight that might be uh, one of the strategies that you want to uh, incorporate into your your routine in order to be able to keep that weight off um, the last reason that I uh, w w would suggest that you, you, you don't go out and perform uh, aerobic exercise is because aerobic exercise is also very catabolic. Um, and this relates uh, to the to the to the uh, to the reason why I recommend uh, a resistance training for those people that are overweight and obese. Um, aerobic exercise, if you perform it for a long period of time, causes skeletal muscle to be broken down. The protein in the muscle is actually used as a source of energy, and what you actually find is that your muscle mass can actually decrease. 
Now the problem that people who are overweight or obese have, particularly if they've been dieting in the past, is that they may have a damaged metabolic rate because they've gone through a period of dieting which is also catabolic. If you cut your calories uh, to try and lose weight, uh, you start to use your skeletal muscle as a source of energy um, and it in a, in a very similar way to aerobic exercise. So aerobic exercise and cutting your calories, which are the two things most people do when they want to try and lose weight, is a, they're both catabolic processes and that, that catabolic process decreases the amount of skeletal muscle you have. So you, you will lose body fat but you will also lose skeletal muscle and your resting metabolic rate is directly proportional to the amount of skeletal muscle you have. So as you lose skeletal muscle, your resting metabolic rate goes down which means that it's very hard to continue losing body fat but it's also very easy to put that body fat back on when you continue eating your normal diet and like I said before if you haven't cleaned up your diet and you go back to your original diet uh, you will simply make th the problem worse so this is a this is a very uh, it's a cyclical uh, event that seems to people seem to go through the same process over and over again uh, they want to lose weight um, they go out, they, they cut their calories and they do aerobic exercise. That causes a breakdown in their skeletal muscle. The loss of skeletal muscle lowers their rest of resting metabolic rate. They look and see that they've lost weight, not realizing that much of that weight is skeletal muscle as well as body fat. They then come off their diet and go back to eating the way they were, not having cleaned up their diet, back to the old foods. Their resting metabolic rate now is much lower because they've lost skeletal muscle and the foods they were eating in the same quantity now causes them to gain uh, body fat and this causes them to actually get fatter. They then see they're getting fatter so they decide they're going to do something about it and back they go to their aerobic exercise and their, uh, their, their calorie counting, their cutting of calories and this causes the process to occur again and what happens is they get fatter. And you see this gradual deterioration in people's body composition as they get older as they go through this, these cycles of dieting and exercise. I'm saying that aerobic exercise is the wrong type of exercise to pick and the main reasons for the, for, for the main reason that I would suggest to go for um, a resistance training is to build up that skeletal muscle that perhaps you've lost in the past it produces a, you know it produces a muscle building effect this increases your resting metabolic rate which is what you want if you're trying to lose lose body fat um, but aerobic exercise generally seems to have more downsides than it does upsides uh, for those um, wanting to lose weight. And if you go on my blog, there are plenty of research papers that have compared groups um, who have performed exercise um, with groups that have simply um, uh, been given a more higher quality diet. And there was a study that was done and one group was given a Mediterranean style diet to eat. They could eat as much as they want. There was no calorie restriction. They were just said, these are the foods you can eat. It's a Mediterranean style diet, plenty of green leafy vegetables, uh, fatty fish, um, low, low fat dairy have as much of it as you want, uh, you don't need to perform any exercise. Another group um, was given uh, the, same, uh, the same diet with some exercise and another group was given exercise and the group that uh, received the diet only uh, was the group that lost the most weight. Uh, the group that uh, performed the uh, exercise with the Mediterranean diet lost a, sim a similar amount of weight and the group that actually did the exercise lost the least amount of weight. Um, so there was an improvement in body composition in those people that improved their diet and this is what I've been trying to say as my message for a long time. If you want to lose weight, the best way to lose weight is to reverse the process that has caused you to gain the weight in the first place and the reason that people gain weight is not from overeating, it's from overeating the wrong types of foods. If you want to lose weight, what you need to do is eat high quality diet. You don't have to worry about how much you eat because your appetite has a, has a, a is set by your hypothalamus. When you've eaten enough, it will tell you to stop eating. That process doesn't occur when you eat very sugary, very fatty, very salt laden foods that the, the process is, is disrupted. Eating a high quality diet will allow you to eat as much as you want within you know your body will tell you when you've had enough it will give you the energy you need and, and allow you to go and exercise without having to go and force yourself to do it and it will also give you the micronutrients that you need and also be able to get your biochemistry working again 
this approach to losing weight by going to do aerobic exercise I think is actually detrimental uh, and there are three reasons there I've given uh, why I think that the you know aerobic exercise it has its place those people that have normal weight that want to increase their their fitness there's nothing wrong with performing aerobic exercise those people that have perhaps been uh, that have been cleaned up their diet they've already lost a lot of weight uh, and they want to maybe do aerobic exercise for uh, the uh, other reasons the other benefits it has it's very good aerobic exercise is very good for your mental health um, you get a good release of endorphins when you go and you do aerobic exercise it does make you feel good it's very good for fighting depression it's very good for fighting stress and anxiety I don't happen to think it's a very good way of losing body fat um, so you know if you want to take care of your joint you want to you know you want to make sure your joints are, are healthy you don't want to get injured um, you don't want to lose more muscle mass uh, particularly if you've already been on a, on a cycle of dieting because you'll have already lost a lot of skeletal muscle um, and you don't want to 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 cause yourself to eat more um, I would avoid aerobic exercise uh, f f for those people that are overweight uh, and obese and I would try and concentrate if you want to do exercise pull it put in functional exercises uh, from your daily life like gardening walking climbing the stairs and that will that will increase your cardiovascular fitness it's not going to cause you to lose weight, but it will increase your cardiovascular fitness, which will it, which will increase your uh, your uh, ability to fight stress. And, and then at the same time, the main way that you're going to be able to lose weight is to improve your insulin sensitivity, and that means eating high quality foods. You don't have to worry too much about how much you eat, and certainly you wouldn't try deliberately to cut calories what you need to do is over a period of time is to try and phase out the poor quality foods and phase in high quality foods if you're not sure what to eat and what high quality foods are go to my blog and have a look at some of my articles that I've written about which foods are of high quality and which foods are of low quality which foods that I would recommend that you eat which foods I recommend that you avoid generally if it's got lots of sugar in avoid it uh, generally if it's a processed food avoid it try and eat those foods that haven't been processed and haven't had a lot of additives added to them um, and if you do that you'll find that you probably don't need aerobic exercise anyway because you'll find that you will lose weight uh, and then when you've lost some weight and you're you're you're, more, you're closer to your normal body weight if you choose to do aerobic exercise for fun or for fitness then that's fair enough uh, it's very good for improving your uh, fitness it's very uh, certain aerobic exercise particularly for player sport can be fun I just don't think it's a very good way of uh, losing body fat. I hope that was interesting. Um, if you have any questions, please leave them in the comments box below. And as always, I'll try to get back to you uh, and I will see you soon for another video. Uh, and in the meantime, take care.